welcome again. Uh, today's conference um, is organized by myself, um, uh, Professor Rodney Harrison, who's Professor of Heritage Studies at the UCL Institute of Archaeology in London, and by Dan Pat, who's Head of Digital and IT at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge and was previously leading the Digital Humanities Strand at the British Museum. Uh, these are two colleagues with whom I've had the pleasure to work for quite some time now. And. Uh, um, the conference is not only a, a collaboration between us um, and um, our institutions, um, it also emerges from two projects um, that are um, funded, have been funded by the UK, UK Arts and Humanities Research Council. Um, one is um, the Ancient Identities in Modern Britain project uh, that I am co-investigating and on which um, Dempet uh, is also an advisor. And the second is the um, AHRC Heritage Priority Area Leadership Fellowship that Rodney holds. So I will uh, say a few words to introduce um, the, the first and how it is linked to um, the aims of today. And I'll leave it to Rodney to um, discuss uh, his own uh, fellowship. Um, the Ancient Identities in Modern Britain project started in 2016 and has been running for over two and a half years now. Uh, it will come to an end in mid-October uh, 2019. And it is a collaboration between the University of Durham, um, the Departments of Archaeology and Anthropology, and um, the University of Stirling, with um, additional uh, partners and collaborators, academic and non-academic, that are based uh, in other uh, institutions. The project has aimed to explore the variable ways uh, in which people interact, experience, value uh, the ancient past, so from the Iron Age to the early medieval period, um, in contemporary Britain. But we've also tried to situate this understanding in a broader international context. And we aimed uh, to achieve this uh, uh, goal by uh, developing, uh, testing and applying uh, a mixed methods approach that combines data intensive and qualitative methods online and offline. And the project um, really is split in two to reflect this makeup. Um, the Durham team led um, by um, Richard Hinckley, uh, who's also PI on the project, has been focusing on the offline uh, ethnography, primarily at heritage places, whereas the Sterling team, previously uh, based in UCL, has been focusing on the digital heritage um, strand uh, that I'm coordinating. Um, our research uh, has led to a number um, of different outputs, both academic and aimed uh, at a broader readership. Uh, you can see some um, here in the slide. Um, and uh, importantly, it's allowed us to um, engage uh, with the heritage and big data pair in a quite hands-on um, way, and both from a, an empirical and um, a theoretical uh, point of view. We have been uh, navigating this kind of data um, as part of our work um, and have reflected um, on what it means to develop research in heritage using big data. As probably most of you will know, um, given the focus of the conference, and I saw your profiles um, a little bit, um, big data has been variously defined um, in recent years. Um, here you see um, recent proposition by Kitchen and McCardle, um, who um, proposed to um, define big data as that kind of data that um, possesses most properties within a set of qualities that they identify. You see here um, the so-called Vs, um, sheer volume, velocity, variety, um, veracity, value, variability, but also extensionality, relationality, scalability, and fine-grained resolution. Um, data with these properties has come uh, into existence as a result of um, what's <coughs> been the um, transition from more informational to a more collaborative, uh, interactive web. And it is, it has been transforming this, uh, different facets um, of our lives, our ways of being, and also it's been challenging um, paradigms uh, in, in the social sciences. 
Uh, there is um, a quite fast emerging body of literature um, that has been um, dealing with um, how big data has been changing or could or should be changing um, the research uh, questions that we ask, uh, the methods, the technical apparata and the practices that we use. Um, and also how uh, we express the results um, of our research, how we communicate them. Uh, there's been publications looking at the materiality uh, of big data, the ethics of big data, issues of trust. Um, and indeed, there is an entire journal that is also dedicated to understanding the relationship between big data and society, which is the journal of big data and society. Um, research on big data has been growing very fast. Um, but the contribution of heritage and the heritage sector, heritage researchers, um, to this area of scholarship has been quite limited. Um, and by heritage, um, I mean um, those processes and outcomes of interacting with the past uh, in the present and assigning values and meanings to the past in the present. Now, starting from this premise, um, today's event aims to spearhead a discussion uh, on these issues from um, the perspective of the heritage sector um, and um, aims to uh, discuss possible uses of big data um, to study and implement contemporary interventions on the past. To what extent um, is big data important for and relevant to the heritage sector? And um, in trying to answer um, this question, um, today's event focuses on three themes that are reflected in the three sessions. So researching heritage uh, using big data, collecting big heritage data, and curating heritage um, through big data. So the goal is to have a fun, hopefully a very fruitful discussion, um, and then possibly also to publish um, the, um, our reflections and, um, and uh, our conclusion as a special issue. Having said this, uh, I'd like to invite um, Professor Rodney Harrison to introduce the conference from his own point of view. This conference really deals very specifically with, with uh, Chiara's particular set of interests and um, we wouldn't really have been able to run the conference the way that we've been able to run it without uh, Chiara's logistical support, but also her um, intellectual guidance of what is in many ways a very new area that she's very much at the forefront of um, developing. So we're very happy to um, be able to partner with the Ancient Identities Project and particularly with Chiara and Dan on developing the conference today. So um, my involvement in this is, is a little bit different and probably requires also a little bit of explanation. Um, in 2015, the Arts and Humanities Research Council called for um, proposals for leadership fellows in three areas. Uh, these were design, heritage and modern languages. And um, I was successful in, um, in my proposal, which um, suggested that we would take a very broad approach to a series of different themes of which data technology and social change was one. Um, but you'll see some of the other themes that we address through our research here. And these uh, themes relate very closely to the Arts and Humanities Research Council um, future heritage research as priority themes, uh, which are available on, the, um, on our website, uh, which is here, www.heritageresearch.org, and also on the Arts and Humanities Research Council website. Um, <clears throat> so one of the events, we ran an event uh, about two years ago in conjunction with the Alan Turing Institute and the British Library uh, and this was a sort of very initial scoping exercise where we wanted to understand what some of the um, uh, challenges and opportunities for the use of big data might be within the heritage sector more broadly. So we brought together um, sort of key um, uh, players within with, which held different digital collections across the sector in the UK um, and internationally with um, researchers, although the, the, the emphasis on this event was mostly on um, the sort of needs of the sector to, uh, to think about what was happening in the sector, so how big data was changing the way in which the heritage sector works and what some of the um, sort of opportunities and challenges for researchers were. And one of the um, outcomes, there was a, a report 
uh, of this workshop, which is also available on our website if anyone's interested in having a look at it. Um, but one of the outcomes of that was that we wanted to organise another day, which was very specifically focused on uh, what are some of the implications for researchers um, in engaging with uh, big data within the, the heritage sector, more broadly, heritage and museum sector. So this um, opportunity to collaborate with uh, Ancient Identities and with Chiara and Dan um, really helped us to think through some of the ways in which we might do that. And we're, we're very um, pleased to have had the opportunity to do that. So uh, we also have Hannah Morell here, who's on my team, um, who's been supporting the day. So thank you to Hannah as well for working behind the scenes. Uh, and we're excited to hear about what will come out of today. Let me say this. Okay, I've got the thumbs up, so I've done all the things I need to do. Um, and now I need to pass back to Chiara, to Dan, who is going to say something <laughs> about, something about uh, uh, his involvement and, and in particular the involvement of Fitzwilliam. So thanks, Dan. Thank you, Rodney. Uh, I don't have a presentation to show people, but I must pay testament to Chiara for organising this event. It's mainly her and Marta that put this together. Uh, I've now worked with Chiara for six conferences, and this is a culmination of the research we've been doing over ten years, roughly, Chiara, which makes me feel really old now. We've been working together for ten years. We both see ourselves as quite early career researchers still. Um, the Fitzwilliam's role in this is quite small. Um, museums have started to collect big data in different ways. Do we have big data is one of the things that museums always come up with. But one of the big things is about ethics in museums, about how we're collecting data and what we're going to do with that information. We're now starting to collect people's user data, so people come to a museum with a Wi-Fi device. And we track people about where they're going. And we are now starting to think about collecting information about what pe things people are looking at. So we could be doing things about looking at how people integrate with cases. So Chiara might come into our museum and find an object in a case, and there could be cameras in that case and look at where her view site is going. We need to be very explicit about what we're doing. And ethics is a very big thing that we need to think more about. Jeremy, who's in the room, talks about this regularly. And I think we sometimes don't talk enough about that sort of thing. And I hope that comes out today in many of the papers. I'm quite excited about what we might hear today as well. I've heard some of these topics before. Like I've heard Chiara's paper four times so far. But it changes every time. It's something new that you learn in each one. And her research and practice is changing constantly because of these type of events. And that's one of the exciting things about coming to these things. Things mutate and change. You might give the same paper regularly, but you bring new things into it because you've learned new stuff. And I hope that's what you get from today. Now, Rodney's project is really, really important to the wider world of archaeology as well. And I used to be an archaeologist. I'm not really an archaeologist anymore. <coughs> I don't really see myself as an archaeologist. And I go to conferences and people say, I don't really do archaeology. I work in a museum. I'm a digital archaeologist in some ways. But then you could say, what is digital archaeology? But then what is digital humanities? Does that actually exist? In many ways, no. It's humanities but with digital being used as a tool. And that's hopefully what might come out in today's papers as well. I'm super excited to hear what uh, Rich is going to say as well, just from some of the conversations we had last night. And I think you've got some really treats coming up as well. One of the other papers I'm really looking forward to is Melissa speaking later, because I know that she's a firebrand when she talks. And she'll invigorate with the ideas that she comes up with. So I haven't really got much else to say, but apart from thank you for you to come and listen to our events and to Chiara to organise this as well. I think you're going to have a super day. And if you don't, tell us, because we want to know what we can improve on next time. So thank you. Thank you.